it comes. So this poem is called, uh, I want to begin, it's called the, the, the Democracy. Sun struggle to dazzle through the murky skies of fate fails. Foggy lanes of the city of scorpions seem slimy. Dark from the blackout of 30 year old nightmare, bright from the shimmer of recent wounds. Fish eyed fashionable girls peer from the anguished wooden windows. In the local wine shop, a poet sits feverish on the chill of his squeaky little bench, his face buried in the democracy of his bloodless hands. His fragile legs shake from the horror of obscene slogans of bald Hitlers. In the tin roofed meat shops, deaf butcher women clean intestines of buffaloes of the past, a vague ritual of reviving thorns of memory. In the slippery lanes of Asan of Hotayati, stench of the rotten brinjals chokes deities clogged in the niche of crumbling shrines. Wandering cows swing their dung infested tails to bless the human rights experts from the West. Pigeons drop dirt on their glistening scalp to damn their pious souls. A balance of the scales of justice. Just these mantras, poet of the frozen lanes from the city of fiery dragons of hunger, deaf to the helpless cries of a just born baby being hacked into pieces by weird wizards of a blind aristocracy, the democracy. It's about Allen Ginsberg. You know, before I started traveling, I was uh, in Kathmandu most of the time. When he died, I was in Kathmandu, and we organized a small program in his, uh, you know, memory. And then at night, I had a dream of Ginsberg. And I haven't read this poem for long, but this poem is in this anthology. I don't know, the Spanish people picked up very dark stuff. <laughs> so, uh, from this translator, I gave her all, all the work, and she picked up, which is, I'm even surprised that some of the work is here, because it, I probably, more, I would like to keep it away because it reminds me of those dark days. Uh, this is called News of Allen Ginsberg's Death. So, I sleep in despair, a dream of a sullen sleep, a vision of inertia that I struggle all night long to shake off. Is this what you call death? A leap from the sacred snow peaks of life, a total ban on the ultimate poem of life, a sleep that drops like a malignant sheet of snow. A drowse that drugs, hash or harmonium can tear open. A question that no one would have asked. My little daughter dances in my dream as I swim, exerting to go across the turbulent stretch of river Satluj, towards green edge of my village where urchins green ball bounces in open granary ground and from the golden wheat fields beyond, Allen Ginsberg appears, pointing towards my grandmother, pulling aerial threads from the shimmering wheel of a milky moonlight. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I would like to read my signature poem because I have come up here almost nine months and I want to read Mules because it is my favorite to, to remind you what, where I come from. and. Uh, uh, this poem, uh, now uh, the good news is they brought this book, it was like 900 page long big book and I couldn't uh, even carry yeah. one copy. I once carried five copies and they charged me at airport. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so heavy. And now I asked them to do a smaller version, so they have brought a reduced version of uh, Nepal Trilogy. So this will be easy to, uh, for my friends. I mean, no, I couldn't even ask someone to buy it because it was like 200 uh, uh, euros. You know, so I, and so I thought it's good that they did this small version. And uh, so this is uh, uh, a poem, my favorite poem. I think I read before, in honor of uh, Philip and uh, beautiful Lorene here, whom I dream of all the time, uh, this poem called Mules. <laughs> On the great Tibetan salt route they meet me again, old forsaken friends. On their faces fatigue of a drunken sleep, their lives worn out, their legs twisted, shaking from carrying lustrous flags of bleeding ascents. Age-long bells clinging to them like festering wounds, beating notes of a slavery that modernism brings. Cartons of iceberg, mineral water bottles, solar heaters, Chinese tiles, tin cans, carom boards, sacks of rice, and iodized salt from the plains of Nepal Tarai. Butterflies of the terrace fields know their names, singing brooks, tempests of their breathless climbs. Traffic alert and time tested, they climb, carrying dreams of posh peacocks, pamphlets of a secret religious war, 
filth of an ecologist star semen and tar kitchen for a cocktail party at the base camp. Defunct development agendas of guilty donors. The West's weird visions lusting for an instant purge. Stone steps of the mountains embossed on their drugged brains like lines of a goated love scratched on the historic rocks of the water spouts. Starry skies of the dozing valleys know the ache of the secret sweat. Sunny days along the crystal rivers taste of the bleeding eyes. And the greatest fiction of the struggling lives lost like real mules collecting their hooves on the flagstones encircling a cruel grandeur of bloodthirsty mule paths around the glaciers of Annapurna. Which is uh, my favorite again to just remind, uh, to revive my, uh, you know, relations here. Uh, this is called uh, uh, River, and it's more interesting because it's not about my wife, it's about someone else's wife. So this is called River. You know, in, in in Sanskrit we have this great tradition of creating big images. You know, Sanskrit poets like uh, they, they describe Lord uh, the Lord Shiva's wife, and he describes in such great detail each and every part. The whole book is about the body of the goddess. And he, he describes the genitals in such big elaborate uh, detail. And God go, so got so angry, the goddess got so upset, she cursed him and he turned into a leper. <laughs> so such, such is the power of the poetry that it can even enrage a goddess. Uh, but these, these, these Sanskrit poets, uh, uh, they have a big tradition, so I try to play with it and try to uh, work with them. So poem is called River. Between your marble shoulders and my hairy chest, the river roaring, tears, tears, tears. Between your mellowing mouth and my center tongue, a night of flames and flesh, flesh, flesh. Between your hefty thighs and my throbbing hands, clouds drunk from the forest of rhododendrons, rhododendrons, rhododendrons. Between your almond eyes and my warm mouth, rain dropping like pearls on the plump leaves of the jungle, jungle, jungle. Between your shimmering skin and my dark hair, grass greener than the greenest parakeet, growing yellowish from incessant rain, rain, rain. Between your nights by the important pillow of your husband and my crazed headpiece, a poem of spring that shall fill my deep wounds, sprouting flowers, flowers, flowers. Between you tulips and my fragrant pen, a brain fever bird's crazed cry, mad 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 between the sparkle of your teeth and my sleep a rain coming like a roar of a starving stream in the starless summer gloom of the night night between your melon breast and thrust of my soft lips the rage of the river battering its head against the magic mountains mountains between your decisions between your decisions and my flickering lamps, the river mad. You, you poet, you bastard, go away. Yeah. Five uh, so I can hopefully do two quick poems. Uh, one is my favorite, which I Philip likes, and we are they are doing this anthology of Eternal Snow, nearly ready, and we have a lot of uh, friends here who have uh, contributed to that. And this poem is called, uh, You Are a New Yorker. Oh, you know, I yeah. like New York. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, New York is the ultimate place. So this, this short book, well, big book is coming out with a lot of pictures and art and design and a huge book. And uh, so that's why I'm here also to collect more art and uh, work with the my publisher. And so uh, also uh, I'll be working with NYU and also Columbia this year, with oh, nice. working with the students and doing a big reading on 16th of April. So you are invited uh, and more details will follow on my Facebook and other, other, other venues. Uh, and also Colombia in the end of uh, uh, this uh, April. Uh, so this is a poem, you are in New York, because I love New York City, you know. Uh, I, I travel a lot, I was in Nicaragua, I was in Germany, I go to all over the world, Ireland and everywhere. Uh, but uh, when you go to New York City, you know, it's special. You, know, you, you say I'm New Yorker, and say, yeah, that's it. But in Germany or England or Nicaragua, or can you say anywhere else in India or Nepal, they will ask you where you're from, and, uh, you know. In New York City, you, you, are, you have to have that spirit of being. So if humanity ever evolves, I think, it will look like New York City. So this poem, uh, you are in New York. The day you learn to notice 
Sparkle of sullen silences snapping the darkness of damn burrows. I stop taking notes of wild lizards racing along the signature shore. You are a New Yorker. The day you start hearing Gaga songs in the screeching subway cars, I stop saying I don't know no Spanish to Latino elders seeking directions. You are a New Yorker. The day you start understanding the thick jumble of subway announcements or roadside pronouncements, you don't have to be a Rockefeller to be a generous guy. You are a New Yorker. The day you stop taking Free State and Island Ferry to click a perfect shot of Statue of Liberty, I stop visiting Times Square at night and forget to find a way out of his labyrinth, I learn to walk the Brooklyn Bridge without a secret desire to dangle a padlock on one of its rafters. I stop, stop seeing Walt Whitman sitting atop his edge looking for his beautiful boys and vagabond fairies entering the sheltered bay. You are a New Yorker. The day you stop fearing spy dogs at Grand Central, recognize the homeless that hang out at Port Authority or Jackson Heights. The day you pass through the shunk at midnight of Sutwin Boulevard or Jamaica subway station without holding your breath in terror, you are a New Yorker. The day you start loving Starbucks coffee, wafting along the white glassy Manhattan malls, or learn to chew the Brooklyn bagel, or lap up the steaming loneliness of chatty dog walkers around Central Park, or learn to make love and forget the face of your partner, you are a New Yorker. <laughs> the day you stop guessing the origin of blonde teenager, reading current issue of the New Yorker, stop looking at the bare shoulders of Vietnamese girl on the free Wi-Fi table near the entrance of So Nice Village Cafe on the first day of winter snow. The day you pass by the Magnolia Bakery loaded from famed cupcakes or moon-sized cookies, the day you stop visiting White Horse Tavern to pose against Dylan Thomas's drunken portrait, or stop hearing John Lennon's voice climbing the fire escape ladders of Hotel Chelsea, or stop looking for the room where she gave Leonard Cohen a blowjob, you are a New Yorker. <laughs> the day you stop gawking at gay couples on L train, romancing like Bollywood couples, on a, or fervently discussing pussy power, animal rights, or their ailing pets or parents. The day you stop Staring at the Hisadak Jews of Williamsburg, their curls dangling out like dangling out of their black velvet caps like Lord Shiva's sacred serpents, you are a New Yorker. The day you learn to laugh like a Latino bartender, a smile like a Filipino waitress, standing beside her stuffed rose pig like a queen. I stop looking at the cleavage of the nudist poet at Central Park. I learn to check your seat in the subway for a stain of shit a homeless might have left for you. <laughs> you are a New Yorker. The day, the day the girl from Cleveland, Ohio, behind the counter at Greenwich Cafe, gives you her email or offers a free top-up on your coffee or lets you take her out, you are a New Yorker.